Hello and welcome back to On Point Wargaming. Uh, the photographs you saw in the introduction to the video uh, were five of a 10-man Australian commando section that I'm, I'm currently working on. Um, I've been working on a lot of my late war German stuff recently and started these as a bit of a break, a bit of a change. Um, due to a combination of receiving presents and a trip out to uh, War of Games HQ last year, I've somehow managed to amass an Australian army uh, and it hadn't really been looked at since about July last year. You can also add my Stalingrad Germans and my early war French to that list. Um, the amount of metal and plastic I've got to get through, it's a bit depressing when you think about it. Um, anyway, enough of that. Uh, a few people have asked how I went about painting these commandos, so I thought I'd make a very short video. Uh, just based around the techniques and the paints I've used when completing them. It isn't a tutorial as such, but I am planning a more in-depth video when I've completed a few more of the Australian army. Okay, so to start, um, I prime the figures in my standard burnt umber. Uh, I find this works really well with figures that will have a predominantly green uniform or a green colour scheme. Um, after the base coat, um, I applied Russian uniform uh, as the uniform colour. Uh, with, with soldiers fighting in, in humid and rugged jungles, it, it was really rare that uniforms maintained that standard uh, colour uh, for long. So you could probably use a, a wide array of different greens as a base for the uniform. Up next, I'm painting outwards as always with the skin. Uh, for the flesh, I've used a sunny skin tone uh, with a dab of burnt umber uh, to slightly dull it. Um, you apply this to the face, neck, arms and hands of the figures. Uh, a lot of the commando figures are sporting beards, so use a colour of your choice when you're painting beards and, and any hair that you can see on there as well. Next up is to paint the webbing, packs, gaiters and any, any hats or headgear that the figures are wearing. Uh, for this I've used a khaki grey. Uh, with any water bottles being painted in burnt umber and the webbing around that again use khaki grey to, to pick that out um, following this the paint the, the boots are painted in chocolate brown and if the figure is carrying a rifle uh, paint the wooden parts and the strap using um, black brown um, and for metallic parts apply a, a mix of black and gunmetal grey in about a 50-50 a, a mix that, that should that should really work well for that. Um, a number of the commandos are armed with uh, an Owens um, submachine gun. Uh, that's a rather funky looking SMG that was unique to the Australian Army. Um, this can be found with a camouflage scheme applied, but I've opted for a plain metallic version with the foregrip painted in burnt umber. Uh, if you choose to apply a camouflage scheme, there are lots of photographs online that you can use as a reference material. Uh, if I was to camouflage the SMG, I would probably go for the, the khaki grey as a base, uh, with Russian uniform uh, as a camouflage pattern. I, I'm, I may do that moving forward, I'm not quite not quite sure yet. So with the main colours now applied, it's time to add uh, a number of different washes um, to, to, the, to the figure. Um, the, the first wash is to apply um, Reichland Flesh Shade uh, to all the flesh areas of the figures. Don't worry if it appears a little red or ruddy, uh, a highlight will be applied uh, later on and this will tone the skin right back down. Uh, the second wash is uh, a Thonian camo shade, and this is applied to the uniform. Uh, you could also use Agrax Earth shade for a, a more darker and dirtier wash, but I've opted for a Thonian camo shade. It does, it works really well with the, with the, um, the Russian uniform. With any parts of the kit that have been painted khaki, uh, burnt umber or chocolate brown, uh, use Agrax Earth shade. Um, and apply null oil to any metallic parts of the weapons. Um, so once you've got all your washes down, leave them to fully dry and it's time to move on to, to your highlights. Um, as the Reichland Flesh Shade, it's, it's quite a deep wash. Uh, you can use basic sunny skin tone to add highlights to the, to the brow, nose, chin and cheekbones of the figure. It won't, it won't, it will make it pop it, but it won't be too bright. Um, for the hands, you want to pick up the knuckles and tops of the fingers. When highlighting the uniform, uh, what I've done is I've used Russian uniform with a small dab of sunny skin tone uh, to give a slightly lighter colour than the basic Russian uniform uh, green. It's not too stark, not too bright, but it does, it, it really accentuates those highlights on the, on the folds and creases. Like I say, apply this to all the folds and creases of the uniform. 
the figures are really well sculpted um, and will allow you to easily pick out these raised areas, the creases, the folds. Um, the sculpts are really, really good and it will allow you to do this really quite easily. Um, with the webbing, headgear and gaiters, I've used khaki grey again and again added a, a dab of sunny skin tone. I've just hit the raised areas of any equipment, packs, etc. For weapons, boots, bottles, um, again use burnt umber and again pick out the most uppermost areas. Um, and for the metallic parts of the weapons, add a slight highlight using gunmetal grey, but again, just a slight one. Uh, it shouldn't be too bright or too stark. And with that, um, that that's that's your finished commando right there. Um, I, I painted these individually rather than batch painting them, and I can I can normally get through one in a sitting with the with the washes drying, uh, etc. But again, one in one sitting is not too bad. Um, you can batch batch paint them. And that's something I tend to do for more mass infantry with, with my Australians. I'm going for a more, a kind of a, a more detailed look rather than a, than a mass approach. Um, but once once you've got your, your your figure done, it's time to move on to, to the basing. Um, I've done a previous video called All About the Basing, and in there it, there's techniques for applying jungle basing to to your Australian commandos and your, your, your Japanese and your, your US Marines um, that those techniques can be applied to any 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 armies fighting in the jungle uh, well I hope you find that very short video a bit useful um, in painting your own commandos and also just some general techniques on, on painting um, jungle based figures um, but until next time take care uh, may your dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video take care now bye bye